question for you. Are you a video guy? And if so, how much importance do you place on audio? Well, I say we should all place more importance on audio and with bloody good reason. Five bloody good reasons, actually. Let's get into it, but in case you're new to the channel, I'm Harv, I'm a videographer, and I make videos about videography. So do subscribe if you find this interesting and helpful. As ever, I've timestamped everything so you can just skip the bit you want. And also, this channel now has a Patreon where it's non-profit. Any funds from Patreon go back into the channel to buy gear, to do unbiased reviews, and then I give the gear away to my backers. So if this video helps you and you like giveaways, do check it out, it's linked below. Anyway, let's get into it. Reason number one, there haven't been any significant giant leaps in audio recording technology for a long time. I mean, at least none that are relevant to filmmaking. Condenser microphones, for example, have been around since 1916, and honestly, you know, they've improved, but the basic design hasn't really changed much. This means that there's always a pretty robust market for used gear, and that's great news for us. It means that there's huge value to be had. I'd say the last big innovation when it comes to recording audio is the move to digital recording in the 80s. And, you know, since then, we've now got things like plug-in versions of EQs and compressors, and they're kind of a fraction of the price of the hardware equivalents. Reason that you should invest in audio gear too? You reach the peak of the diminishing returns curve pretty damn quickly when buying audio gear. Let's say you need a microphone and you go out and you spend between 700 to 1,000 pounds, euros, dollars equivalent, and bear in mind, you know, us video guys would spend that on one lens, no problem. And I would say, in my opinion, you have reached the point in which spending more doesn't necessarily get you more in terms of sound quality. Unlike camera gear, I feel like an end game camera setup, you know, you're gonna be spending so much more money. And I feel like there's also a more gentle knee with the diminishing returns curve and the peak point, you know, I feel like is much, much higher price with video gear. Reason number three and Audio gear is future-proof. And let's just look at connectivity, for example. Take the humble XLR connector. Now, these have been around forever, and I see no reason why they'd be going away anytime soon. It's not like, you know, with camera manufacturers where just all of a sudden they could decide to ditch a certain lens mount in favor of a newer model. And all of a sudden, you've got some pretty, pretty big financial decisions to make. So I say no. Ancient microphones work with modern audio interfaces and vice versa, and they always will. Audio gear is future-proof, so invest with confidence. Reason four, audio gear is rugged, relatively speaking, and definitely compared to some video gear. Let's take, for example, the Shure SM7B microphone. It's a dynamic microphone that's just instantly recognizable. So many people use this, and in my time of being, you know, vaguely involved some in some way in audio, I've not even heard of one of these breaking or, you know, or malfunctioning in any way. It's just built to last. The same goes for many other microphones with maybe the exception being tube microphones, which might need tubes replacing at some point. But the same goes for, you know, audio interfaces, compressors, uh, preamps and loads more. Reason five why us video guys should be investing more in audio is that audio is as important as video. Let's just get that straight. And I just feel like sometimes, a lot of the time, it's not seen as that way. Not only that, but I would argue that subpar audio is less forgivable than subpar video. Let's put that to the test, shall we? Hey, well, here we are. I'm filming with nice looking video high quality video and rubbish quality audio. How, how is it? Are you enjoying this? Let's switch now. And here we go. How would you like the, oh, the quality of this video is? Yeah, it's not very good, is it? Um, however, the audio, how good does the audio sound? That's thanks to a nice microphone that's pretty close to me and it's going through a nice signal chain. And, um, you know, it looks rubbish, I know that, but I'd pick this combination any day over the latter. Former. 
Anyway, next I want to show you examples of audio gear that get you into kind of end game you know, sound quality without going to kind of top end gear. And really, this is what manufacturers hate. Someone with experience, you know, cutting through marketing BS and giving valuable advice. Firstly, the AKG C414 microphone. And it's the microphone that you're hearing right now. I've got it just up here, maybe, um, I don't know, 30, 40 centimeters away. And it sounds great. It's a gear that I've had for more than a decade and I haven't had any piece of camera gear that long. And what does that tell you? It's a mic that was brilliant when it first came out in 1971 and it's changed a little design wise since then. But you know what? Throughout its life cycle, it's been brilliant. It was brilliant then. It's brilliant now and it's just brilliant. But I'm not actually recommending the C414. I'm instead going to recommend a microphone by a company called Warm Audio, and it's a faithful recreation of that microphone, and it's called the WA14. It's as near as makes no difference the same microphone. It sounds great on almost everything. It's really super versatile, and you know, it's half the price of the original, and around the same price as something like this, the Shure S77B, which people seem to love but more on this microphone in a bit. Lately, I've been really loving this mic, which is another microphone from Warm Audio. Yeah, this is not sponsored, by the way. <laughs> this is the WA84, and it's a clone, sort of a, a recreation, more like, of a classic studio microphone, the Neumann KM184, and it just gives a really sort of nuanced sound, really airy, but with sort of surprisingly fat sounding low end. It's also really versatile. It sounds phenomenal on things like acoustic guitar. And actually, I've been loving this on voiceover work, and I know that's not what it's designed for, but you know, if it sounds good, who cares? Not me. <laughs> and you know, it's a third of the price of the original, so. Next, the Tascam Porter Capture X8, and this is just a phenomenal piece of gear. As you can see, it's got a glorious touchscreen. I shouldn't really be hand holding it, of course, but you know, just for this, it's fine. It records in 32 bit audio, so super high quality, and the internal mics sound really good. It's got tons of inputs. This is just a phenomenal bit of gear. It's, um, I've been blown away. It. Alternatively, for a desktop audio interface, I really like the Solid State Logic 2 Plus, which gives you an epic signal chain and digital conversion for a relatively tiny amount of cash. The Tascam X8 or SSL 2 Plus, paired with a mic like the Warm Audio WA14, gets you into really high quality audio territory for between 700 to 800 pounds dollars or euros. To the point where I would say the next significant jump in sound quality for you would be to look into something like acoustic treatment. Right, things you don't need. I'm going to recommend against buying fancy preamps. I just, I just can't in good conscience recommend them. I don't think they're good value for money. It's not that I think they do nothing at all, it's just that I think that your money is better off elsewhere, such as, you know, room acoustics or, uh, you know, buying a different, uh, upgrading an instrument, um, uh, getting a better microphone. Okay, I've just done a little search to try and find a good example. So yeah, would you rather own a Neve 1081 Classic or a Warm Audio WA14 and a Tascam Porter Capture X8 and a decent mic stand and a MacBook Pro and still have £150 left in your pocket. Sure, I do own a Heritage Audio Britstrip for my signal chain, which is a rack unit based on a Neve preamp, EQ and compressor. But Neve are one of those companies that I mentioned that when you buy one of their products, they basically rob you. But this Britstrip isn't made by Neve, and so you get a lot more for your money, and I didn't even buy it for the preamp, I bought it more for the EQ and the compressor, which are amazing. Next, my love-hate relationship microphone, the Shure SM7B. Now, why has it become almost fashionable to have one of these in shot on YouTube videos? I mean, just sort of dominating the space, getting ob obscuring the subject's face, you know, that doesn't look good. I say get mics out of the shot, you know, and just position a more sensitive microphone just out of the shot, like I've got right here, and it's gonna sound great. I've both owned and sold several of these microphones in the past, and obviously I still have this one, um, but I 
think I'm going to sell this one as well because I, I just prefer other microphones. Whilst I get that these mics suit certain vocalists, usually very loud vocalists, and I know all the, you know, all the famous uh, singers who have used this in the past, you don't have to tell me. I just feel like this is a very big mic, it's very heavy, it's uh, personally, subjectively, very ugly to look at, um, and in terms of sensitivity, it's notoriously very low sensitivity, so it needs a ton of gain and for your lips to be basically touching the end of the mic. I'd also argue that the value for money isn't great. I don't think this is particularly cheap for what I feel it is not going to go down well. I, I feel like it's a kind of an ordinary sounding mic. I don't think it's a, a special sounding mic. It's more just kind of like a workhorse. I feel like it also picks up just a fairly narrow frequency range compared to other microphones. And then when you consider that a lot of people pair this with something like a cloud lifter, which, you know, boosts the gain, all of a sudden the price is quite a lot higher. That adds on something like £125, something like that. And just, just to say, you shouldn't have to do that when you buy a microphone for this price. That shouldn't be necessary. There should be um, an option that Shure offer where, where this is just um, maybe built in for the same price as well. Anyway, I've rambled for long enough. Let's take everything in this video, grind it up, and make a, a nice espresso of tips to take away. There have been few significant leaps in audio recording technology recently, so buy with confidence. In my experience, you reach the peak point of that diminishing returns curve very quickly when buying audio gear, so please don't overspend. Audio gear is, relatively speaking, future-proof, so don't be concerned about your gear becoming outdated. Audio is as important as video, so please do prioritise it. When choosing new audio gear, seek out value because there's huge value out there. And whatever you do, don't let yourself get swept away in marketing BS. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. My question of the day for you is this. What does an end-game audio setup look like for you without breaking the bank. I'll be down in the comment section. I can't wait to hear what you've got to say. I've now filmed hundreds of videos about audio and videography, of which the algorithm has recommended this video for you next, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.